Okay, so I, I don't know if Nandini Didi, are you there? I'm here. Oh, good. <laughs> Just, <laughs> okay, so apologies for the technical difficulties that we're all facing right now. Uh, but I, I would like to introduce uh, another god sister of ours that is super amazing. I love spending a lot of time with her. She spent many years with Shila Gurudev. And during the last year, last pastimes with Shila Gurudev, she was there. And, you know, she every time I see her, I, I feel inspired to want to serve Srila Gurudev. I feel that she has this lovingness about her that makes me feel so comfortable around Srila Gurudev that I, I, I feel like actually his daughter. And um, I'm so fortunate to have a god sister like her um and she's she's just super amazing and anyone that's actually spent time with her would know that um it's none other than our nandini didi <laughs> thank you yes it's your amazing sister too and um i just wanted to thank you and you showed the nanda Prabhu because these classes as Basti maharaj was saying before they're so nourishing it's like each week your heart just gets more and more nourished. I've been watching you on Facebook Live and it even helps me to unlock my um, remembrance of Gurudev and, and unravel times that are revealed later on. So thank you so much. Um, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Radhika Ye Piatma Ye, Shimat Bhakti Vedanta, Nara Nitina Mine, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Vishnu Pistai Bhutare, Shimat Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Tina Mine. I offer my unlimited obeisances again and again, millions of times to my beloved Srila Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all Guru Parampara, to all the Vaishnavas that are here present today. I ask you to please forgive me if I make any mistakes and to bestow your mercy on me. So, yeah, that was, yeah, it's, as I said before, it's, it's been so amazing just to hear in these nourishing pastimes of Gurudev and listening to everybody's um, everyone's personal exchanges with Gurudev and everyone's been touched by Gurudev in some way or another so deeply and I see that through all of his disciples anyone who's been connected with Gurudev so it's been it's been wonderful so I have to like start at the beginning because I can't proceed without show my gratitude towards our beloved Srila Prabhupada because without his mercy I wouldn't have even be able to been able to come to Gurudev or we know we've heard like Gurudev saying so many times why have I come here it's because of the order of your Srila Prabhupada so growing up in Iskon gave me so much refuge and shelter in every single way that I can think of. Like growing up as a child, being able to read Shila Prabhupada's books and having a deep, profound, deep, profound, you know, revelations from that, like from reading um, the science of self realization to the Gita, Shima Bhagavatam. Like in every way, it's given me shelter like even my senses my eyes seeing Takuji's I know Takuji's see you through listening to classes through um seva through your whole body and so many places there was being able to take shelter from like taking Bashad and everything was really you'd see how the Srila Prabhupada disciples were they had so much faith in Srila Prabhupada and the devotees there. So I just feel so grateful to Srila Prabhupada for giving us so many just shelter 
from this world where it can be so mad and chaotic. So I met Shira Gurudev. I have in I was in it's called Parikram. I in I was doing Parikram in Maipur in Navadweep. And it was 2007 and or 2008. And I was in it's called Parikram. I was in um, near the Samadhi of Gorvidas Babaji. So I was listening to like Hari Kata there from, from Iskon there. And then all of a sudden I turned around and then I saw Gurudev walk through. And this was my first meeting with him. And I could see he was only with two other like disciples. It must have been Madhav Maharaj at that time. And um, I don't know who else was there, but I remember first glancing and seeing this personality just walk in and he was paying obeisances at Gorgadas Babaji's Samadhi. And I remember at that moment, it was so spontaneous within my heart that I just got up from the Parikram and I was like, I know I need to pay obeisances, obeisances to this personality. So I remember from afar, just, just recognize, not even recognizing something within me just led me there just to pay my pranams. So I remember paying my pranams to Guru there from a distance. I was too scared to go up close. And then I went back to the parikram where I was sitting and I just sat there. And then Guru there came and he stood right in front of me. And he was looked at everyone in the whole parikram for like a couple of minutes and so intense. Like Guru there was looking at every single person. And I, I know from that moment, my, my life just changed. And then again, after that, I carried on as normal in my daily life. And then I kept on meeting Shira Gurudev's disciples. And I'd never met any devotees like this. Because in my heart, I always wanted, I always wanted to love Guru. I knew that was in my heart so deeply. And I used to pray to Srila Prabhupada and Nitananda Prabhu, like, I want, I want to find a guru that I can give my love to, that I can just speak about. And just, I know I wanted to find a personality like that, like Srila Prabhupada. The way when you see, you know, Srila Prabhupada disciples speak about Prabhupada. I wanted that mood. And... I started meeting Shugu, those disciples, and wow, I'd never met any, any devotees like this. They had so much love and affection for Gurudev. And when they were speaking, and I was remember thinking, I want to be like this. I want to talk like this. I want to serve like this. I want this love. And then, yet there was such a synchronicity, just meeting one devotee after another, after another. And then through Mercy, I ended up going to Italy Festival at that time. And it was, I um, can't remember where it was, but it was Italy Festival. And it was the most ecstatic festival I've ever seen or been to. And the Kirtan and people just crying out to Guru Dev. Like, I've never seen that. Like, it was in such an amazing festival. I'd never seen any festival like that. And I had been to so many. And I remember at that time, just feeling confused, like where to go in my life, because I had attachments here and I had attachments there. So I went with one of our um, beautiful God sisters, Radhika Didi. I said, I want to, you know, could you come to Gurudev with me? And I wanted to ask a question. So I was like, okay, I need to ask this question. I needed guidance at that time. So I put my hands together and I said, Guru Dev, please, can you give me guidance? Because I never, I had, just please give me guidance at this time. And Guru Dev looked straight at me and he said, I'm always giving you guidance, always giving you guidance. And I just, I didn't expect that answer. And then I realized, I was like, how does Gurudev even know me to even be giving me guidance? And it just made me realize we do not know where this, how long this 
guru-disciple relationship has been. We don't know how, guru, how long guru there's been in my life. Where it started, where it, you know, where it began, it's beyond my, my intellect. So something I think must have happened at that point where the guru there said, I'm always guiding you. So when I came back to um, England, that was it. My, my heart had been captured and stolen and it must have been put in Guru Dev's pocket because I decided to leave everything at that point, like where I was working and my house at that time. And I decided to go and spend time with Guru Dev. I knew this was the most important thing in my whole life that I could be doing is just go and spend time with Guru Dev, wherever you can, you know, any type of servo, just try and be there, be there with the devotees. So I went to Vrindavan and I didn't really know anybody. And I was thinking at that time, how am I going to do this? But it was Guru Dev's words that really I could hold on to. So then I got to meet some of the disciples I'd met earlier and it was really through their love and their affection, which I'd never experienced before ever, that they really encouraged me and I got initiated in Seva Gunj and I, there was a group of devotees that were going to South Africa for a tour, a three month tour for Guru Dev. And they said, would you like to be part of it? And I was like, yeah sure <laughs> i'll go you know it would be wonderful to go and if i could do any seva sure so the guru there was going to south africa for the first time and i just i was so new i didn't know what was happening but i just i just booked the ticket and <laughs> went and guru and then it was a three-month tour in south africa and I met so many devotees it's, that hadn't even met Gurudev, but had been impacted so deeply. And it was, this is what gets me the whole time. It's like how Gurudev really impacted and affected people to their real heart's core. So just meeting devotees, I hadn't even sort of just heard of Gurudev and just been reading these books were completely captured. So during our um, tour, we got to do like, be able to meet so many disciples, actually uh, Guru Dev's disciples. We got to arrange festivals. And as I said, Guru Dev was the star of the show there. He was, he was, we made posters of Guru Dev and he was all around South Africa. Pictures saying, come to the festival. Um, he was on radio stations on loop every hour. He was, um, there was television um, people that wanted to interview Guru Dev. There was such, because we've done lots of like, um, been distributing loads of leaflets, going to different temples, speaking about Guru Dev. And I've got some leaflets here. I can just show you here. I don't know if you can see. It's so beautiful. These were all around South Africa. <laughs> it's a, it says the Festival of Devotion, Shira Narayan Maharaj of Rindavan, India, the foremost teacher of, of pure bhakti in the world today, will be visiting South Africa for the first time in January 2010. So this is a, <clears throat> another leaflet as well that we gave to all the devotees that came to the programs. And um, so, yeah, so it was a real rush up for when Guru Dev was coming. There was a real anticipation. So when Guru Dev finally came after the first month and a half of all these programs and being on the radio and all these things, Guru Dev came to the airport and I'd never seen anything like it. Like there must have been a hundred and over a hundred people at the airport. And as soon as Guru Dev came out of the like entrance of the airport, everyone, we just lost control, screamed and screamed and jumping. And there was 
popcorn thrown out. It was like the biggest, big, like never seen anything like it. Like even the guards were dancing seeing Gurudev. And it was ecstatic, complete ecstasy. This is what I mean, like Gurudev, what he does to people's hearts at that, in it says it takes one moment and that is it. You're just gone and yeah, this carried on for five, 10 minutes, the screaming. It was <laughs> just a short scream. It was ecstatic madness. It was beautiful. And I'd made a garland for Gurudev and I put it on him at the airport. And it's like the first time, it's like when you're in his presence, time just stood still. There was no definition of time. You're like a deer in headlights. Everything was slow motion, even in the screamings and the beautiful ecstasy that was there. So Gurudev came and the first few cl um, classes he did in the halls that we did, completely packed, completely, completely packed. And there was a prince that came to see Gurudev. It was just, it was such an ecstatic time when Gurudev was there and he was so pleased, so pleased. And that's what really, I think really was incredible was just seeing how Gurudev impacts everybody, even for a moment, seeing the security guards dancing to devotees who had been waiting for him and the reciprocation between them it was it was so beautiful and yeah this is like this is a <laughs> pastimes that I wanted to share with Gurudev because yeah because I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to be part of this tour so for the mercy of Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas so I didn't want to take too much time but thank you <laughs> That Nandini was absolutely beautiful. You tra you transported us to South Africa uh, <laughs> and into them festivals with Shila Gurudev. And I can, it's like a rock star entering uh, an arena. And I can just Completely. imagine Shila Gurudev. Yeah, I can just imagine. I can just imagine it and, and see it and visualize it. And, you know, this is the thing. Like, you know, you were speaking earlier about Shila Prabhupada and um, how Shila Prabhupada disciples us. You know, I, I actually pray my Dandavat Pranams to all of Srila Prabhupada disciples because, like you said, if they they didn't do what they did, then, you know, Gurudev would never have, have come uh, to to this. And we're like, a, like, you know, we're fortunate that Gurudev came in this in this way. And um, I just wanted to say, like, you know, this is uh, now it becomes our responsibility, like the Pasu Maharaj said, and this is like this running order that... Now it's our responsibility to have that for Srila Gurudev. So when someone comes, they have that relationship and they bring, and you know, I've seen it many times in the Ganga Matas, like someone would, sit, new devotees would come and sit and it's like Gurudev had this relationship with them. Yeah. Was like, like, I know them. Mm -hmm. And the, the, these, these, these uh, what would be seen as new disciples, shouldn't call them that, but they would come in and be like, I've seen him before, I've spoken to him before, or, you know, there's this relationship that they had. And, you know, the Ganga Matas also do a fantastic job of building that relationship. But, you know, this is, this is the beauty of Srila Guru, that this is the beauty of any Sri Guru, is that the, the that the disciple embarks or em embraces their qualities that they see and you know la last week I think it was that we were discussing that um how uh, you can see a sevak of Srila Gurudev because they have them qualities of Srila Gurudev in them and that's what Gurudev gave us he gave us his qualities that now we can show others because when people meet Srila Gurudev disciples they're like I know you're a Srila Gurudev disciple. Um, actually, Vipin Prabhu was telling me the other day, he, he went uh, to, I think, Varsana and he was speaking some Harikata there. And this Baba that has been like living there, looking after this temple, he came over and said, oh, are you a Narayan Maharaj disciple? And uh, Vipin was like, how do you know that I'm Srila Narayan Maharaj's disciple? And he goes, only Srila Narayan Maharaj would speak like this in his books. So it's like, Gurudev impacted so many people without even 
think people that we don't even probably know even heard of so he's just you've emphasized that in in your harikata and i'm so grateful uh that you did so thank you so much didi please hey, Nandini, um i just want to say i don't want to embarrass you too much uh, but madhavrat's just posted it anyhow um i've heard the blow by blow account of that tour many times from sudavian <laughs> kishori and they test they test your courage tenacity uh stamina and bravery throughout that tour because south africa is a pretty Hair, I think it was quite a hair-raising trip. So you omitted all the things that glorified you, but I, I think it would be remiss not to mention that. Madhurat's come up on screen, so I've got a feeling he wants to add to that. Uh, Madhurat, please. <laughs> I will. And I was just, I just put in my comment that was, you did so much service and it was quite austere as well, from what I can remember. <laughs> quite a lot of austerities to actually, you made it all sound like wonderfully ecstatic and it probably was, but I know there was, you know, you went, underwent many hardships in that uh, service for Gurudev. So, and, and the end result was, was amazing. It was re really an amazing tour. You know, it was so amazing just being part of the tour. I was just happy, so happy to be just included that yeah. everything, because Gurudev would just shine everything, you know, any austerities didn't even feel like it for well, me. You guys uh, had an armed guard with you the whole time, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was an adventure, yeah, it was an adventure. <laughs> I had a gun and had a grenade in his back yeah. following them around. <laughs> okay, let's see if we... Thank you, Nandini. Haribo, Nandalas. Okay.